Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to have a nice customizable analog clock for your Linux Mint desktop. And I'm going to be using a program called Clocks. Clocks provides a full functioning analog alarm clock and calendar. There's a variety of styles of clocks to choose from, and they're all customizable to fit your preferences. And as you can see, I have a clock right here on my desktop now. This is my host machine. This is actually Windows 7. But I'm going to bring over Linux Mint running in VirtualBox right now. And the first thing we have to do before we install Clocks is make sure that Wine is installed. Clocks is an executable file, and Linux does not run executables without having Wine installed. So I'm going to go to Menu, and then I'm going to go to Software Manager. And then in the search box, I'm going to type Wine, and I'm going to hit Enter. And here it is right up top here. So I'm going to double click on it, and then I'm going to click on the install button right here, and you can see down at the bottom here, there's a green bar that's going, that's showing that it's installing, it's 33% finished. Here I'm going to check the box to accept the user license agreement, and I'm going to click forward. And you may not get that window there. If you don't get it, don't worry about it. And I'm going to pause while it finishes installing. And it's finished installing. You can tell right here where it says installed. And there's a green check mark there. So I'm going to go ahead and close Software Manager. And now I'm going to open the web browser. And in the search box, I'm going to type CNET. Clocks. And I'm going to hit enter. Here it is right up top here. I'm going to click on it. It gives a brief description of the program. I'm going to click on the green download now button here. If you have the option to run, go ahead and run it. I'm going to save the file. Once it's finished downloading, I'm going to go to show all downloads and I'm going to right click on the program here I'm going to click on open containing folder I'm going to right click on the executable go to open with and then I'm going to go to wine windows program loader I'm going to click on that I'm going to go ahead and close all these windows out. Here you can select your language. I'm going to leave it at English and I'm going to click OK. I don't want a desktop icon. You could leave that checked if you wanted to. I'm going to uncheck that. And I'm going to leave the box checked for Start Menu Shortcuts. I'm going to click Next. I'm going to leave the destination folder at the default location. I'm going to click Install. I'm going to uncheck the box to show README, and I'm going to leave the box checked for Run Clocks, and I'm going to click Finish. And here's the clock here. It's running a little bit funny because I'm in VirtualBox. And as you can see, you can move it around anywhere you want. I'm going to bring it over here so you guys can see this. Now if I right click on the clock, I can go to Options. Here I can set the transparency of the clock. If I move the bar down, you can see how the clock's fading. And I'm going to bring it back up. Here you can set the transparency for when you mouse over the clock. If I enable this, I can move the bar down and it'll show me how much the clock is going to fade when my mouse goes over it. As you can see. So anytime I hover over the clock, it would fade that much. Under Windows Options, I'm going to check the box to pin to desktop, and that will uncheck the box for always on top. You also have the option to click through. If there was something underneath the clock, you could click through the clock. You have the option for unmovable window, and I do use this, and I'll show this to you later. 
there's also a limit position by screen size, hide from alt tab list, and you could also use the data as a system tray toolkit. You can set the priority of the clock. You could change the language if you'd like. Under startup, you can have the clock run when Windows starts, and I'm going to check that box. You could have the clock run when a user logs in. You could have it to not adjust positions for dual monitors, and you could also allow multiple instances. And I'm going to leave that box checked. Under anti-aliasing, I just leave the method one default selected, and now I'm going to go to appearance. I'm going to bring this over. This is where you could select the style of the clock, and if I start clicking on these, you'll see how the clock changes to different styles. Again, it's not working very good because I'm in virtual box here. You normally don't have the black box behind the clock here. But as you can see, as I scroll up and down, there is a ton of clocks to choose from. And I'm just going to select one for the video here. Under style options, you have it show AM or PM, which you can see right here it says PM right now. You can have it show the date on the clock. I'm going to check that box. Um, now what that will do is it will display the date here on the upper part of the clock. And you could also have it show the second hand, which I'm going to leave that checked. Under zoom, here's how you can adjust the size of the clock. You need to enable it first. And then you can zoom in and out. Under time zones, you could change the time zone if you'd like. And there's not really much under plugins. So right now I'm going to leave everything as it is and I'm going to select OK. Next I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to alarms. Here's where you can set different alarms for different occasions. There's no limit to the alarms that you can set, I don't think. And if you go to new, first you need to name the alarm, I'm going to name it wake up. Under reoccurrence you can have it occur once daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, and minutely. Here's where you'd set the date for the alarm. Here's where you set the time you want the alarm to go off. It's set at 107 right now. So I'm going to set it to 109. So you can see how this works. Under action, you can have a window pop up that tells you what the alarm is about. And I'm going to type wake up. Under place down, here's where you'd select which alarm you want to go off. And if I click this button here, you have seven alarms to choose from. I'm just going to select one for now. Click open. I'm going to check the box for looping so it continually runs. And then I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK again and we'll wait and see if the alarm goes off. And there it is. And I'm going to go ahead and close it now. Now I'm going to right click on the clock. And I'm going to go to calendar. The calendar is just that, it's just a calendar. You can't click on any dates and add any events or anything like that, it's just a calendar. And if I right click on it again, there's a few options. I can set the clock to click through. In other words, if I had a folder or something underneath the clock, I could click through the clock and actually open that folder. I could set the clock to unmovable, which is self-explanatory, and then I can set the clock to always be on top of Windows. And that's clocks. Again, it's a nice customizable analog clock for the desktop. It comes with an alarm and calendar. It's been very useful in my household. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.